as a Christian pastor, I read the scriptures of my tradition and recognize that nearly 2,000 years ago, there was a young, innocent, African, Asiatic Jew, Jesus of Nazareth, who too was executed by the state on trumped up charges. And nearly 20 centuries later, again and again and again, we see brown and black and red and white and yellow men and women who go to the state's execution chambers on trumped up charges. When will this stop? It must stop now. As the pastor of the congregation, where the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. came out against the Vietnam War. As the pastor of the congregation that has hosted presidents and prophets, presidents like Nelson Mandela, prophets like Archbishop Desmond Tutu, in that marvelous revolutionary tradition of speaking truth to power and also seeking to know what the truth is, I stand to say we must call for a stay of execution for Troy Davis and in addition to that, dismantle the death penalty in the United States of America. Anything less than that calls into question our attempt to be a nation of democracy. We must continue to raise our voices. But as a spiritual leader, what I also urge you to do is to resist in ways that never become violent. Even as we raise our voices in protest, our justice rhetoric, our protest rhetoric must never become violent. Otherwise, we seek to the level, we descend to the level of those against whom we protest. We must always engage in non-violent resistance, even at the level of our words. And it is in that spirit of speaking boldly and courageously, yet speaking in a way that is truthful and loving, that I now call us to a moment of prayer. But before calling us to prayer, I want to read to you a word from the Jewish and Christian scriptures. Psalm 107. Listen to these words. God will regard the prayer of the destitute and will not despise their prayer. Let this be recorded for a generation to come so that a people yet unborn may praise the Lord. That God look down from God's holy height to hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those were doomed to die so that the name of God may be declared in Zion and praise in Jerusalem. In the name of a God who listens to the pleas of those who are doomed to die, I invite you now to pray with me. Whether you are a person of faith or not, or just a person of good conscience, join me now in this moment of meditation and prayer. Creator God, you who have made all of us, all of the diverse peoples of the world, we come now in this moment of consciousness raising to ask for you to speak a word of justice and peace to our leaders and legislators, that they may stay the execution of our brother Troy Davis. We come, God, asking for your empowering spirit to encourage us to never grow weary in doing what is right for the sake of justice and peace, compassion and love. Ever keep us questing, O God, in a way that is not violent, in a way that brings harmony even as we 
seek to speak truth to power. We pray now especially, O oh God, for our brother Troy Davis. Let him know that people of goodwill and faith all across this country and world right now are speaking on his behalf. Wherever he is in this moment, God, we pray that you would strengthen his spirit and his resolve and keep him hoping, even in the face of great odds, to know that it is possible for him to walk out a free man. It is possible for there to be a new trial. It is possible, oh God, for life to ultimately triumph over death. We speak these words in the name of you, O oh God, a God who ultimately wants justice and peace, not just for the elite, not just for the great, but for those who often are on the underside of privilege and power. It is, O oh God, in your name that we ask this prayer for our brother, our country, and yes, for our world, a world sorely in need of hope.